Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ryan here. Uh, just wanted to show you guys a couple quick games that uh, I really um, liked here that I just recently played. I'm trying to find the two. Alright, so we'll go to the first game and we'll play it out. So I did my friend, she did the exchange for variation. Just very common developmental moves. And we reach a pretty equal position. This is where I think he shouldn't have made that move. I know he's coming here to put more pressure on this, so I'm going to get my queen out of there, out of this pin here. Um, it's kind of annoying right now. So I bring my queen right here. This is a good move for a couple of reasons. One is that it you know, it gets it out of the way of this pin, because this knight here is going to come and add more pressure to it. And it's also a double attack. It's an attack on this pawn. Though taking this would be a huge blunder for me. And it's also an attack on this pawn. This is the pawn I'm going for, which is also protecting the knight. Um, Sometimes this pawn is, um, what's it called? It's uh, it's not a good pawn to take because your queen can get trapped in a bad position. But this is a pretty decent pawn to take because it's basically uh, two free moves. So if you take it, he either has to you know defend this right now with the queen, or he has to move the knight somewhere. The only weird place that the knight can really move is a demotion um, uh, back to his second rank. So I, I like that move for those reasons. So he carries out with that plan. I decided to just take here because, you know, I kind of want um, his back rank a little bit freer. And also, I've got a lot of nice discovered checks, which I like a lot now, too. Um, I take advantage of taking that pawn, like I said earlier. If he brings his rook here, um, for example, you know, say he gets his knight out and I don't move my queen. If he brings his knight or his, um, his rook here, he can't take his pawn because of this bishop, which I also like a lot about this position. But what's more interesting is all of the discovered checks to come. Um, so he gets his knight out of there, like I was saying. And here's our first discovered check, bishop to the queen. Um, so he moves right there, and another thing with this bishop lineup is there's this, actually a second one. Um, I was really tempted to take here with the knight in that discovered check, but, you know, that would lead to a pretty equal position, uh, one where I'm only up this one pawn. Instead, um, because he could just recapture with the queen here, and then my queen would actually be under some serious trouble. Um, so I, I set another discovered, uh, check on the queen up by getting this bishop here. It's protected by the knight. Um, he moves right there, and then I have a third one. I have a fork here. That's a nice fork, and... I, and um, the queen no longer really has any safe squares. Um, he has one safe square, I, I apologize. It's right here. Um, but apparently he didn't see that, and it was pretty much game over from then. Um, but I liked that. I thought it was instructional for the power of, you know, these uh, bishops here, and not taking at first sight. The second game I really liked was this game. And um, playing this guy, he's a 1400 level player, he's very good. Um, and I think this game is instructional for the you know, the power of the back rank and, you know, why you should always have a flight square for your pieces. So, you know, I like the French. Came out with the French. He did the Tarish variation. And this is all just, you know, simple development. I like this little trick here with the bishop. If the bishop comes here, of course, it wouldn't work in this situation. His pawn needs to be right there. But if his pawn is right here and his bishop comes right here, I can take here with the knight and his bishop is hanging. So usually they just take with the bishop here and then I take back with the knight. It's a free pawn. He didn't do that. He knows the trick. Um, he brings his bishop out to a nice light square. I bring mine out, realizing, or, you know, just kind of baiting on this pawn push right here. He doesn't do it. I decide to take there, take back, and what I like about this position now is that he has an isolated pawn. Um, he can take back here, but, and I also have an isolated pawn in a pretty equal position, but isolated pawns in the center of the board, I like that. And I decide I don't want that, so I bring my knight here to recapture if this pawn takes. Um, and also to prepare for castling. Now he decides to push that pawn. I just drop back one. I bring my bishop out to a nicer spot. My castle. He drops his bishop back. Bring my rook over. I had a pretty nice move here. Um, let's see, where is it? I had a nice move right here, depending on what he did this play. And he actually responded in a way that I couldn't do this move, um, whether on purpose or just, you know, that's how he's playing. But my move was to bring my knight right here and to fork the bishop and the queen uh, and win this bishop with this fork. Uh, but bringing his queen right here, I first have to defend it. This is a mating threat right here. I was tempted to bring my knight right here, but he could chase it away with this pawn, or win a free knight. And I was tempted to bring it here, but there's, I didn't really see a great future for this knight on this square. So I decided to go with this one. It's a flight square. It's my favorite flight square. If you're ever, you know, the other way is to do, you know, h6 here. That's another flight square, but I like this better because it defends this pawn when you move your king up to g7. He goes ahead and moves my rook out of the way. He's setting up for a nice little mate attack right now. Um, 
He's just trying to bring it. You see, he moved from light square to dark square. That's the only purpose of that move. It's because by moving this pawn, your dark squares also become a lot weaker. So what he wants to do is move here, 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 here. And that's mate. And he starts that plan immediately. Luckily, I saw this plan right away. Or else, you know, it's pretty hard to stop. I bring my knight right here, forking the queen and the bishop. And I figured he would just take what he did. He wants to carry on with his plan, but his plan just got a little bit harder. Because I can just, you know, simply retake with this queen now. So instead, he brings his knight right there, and he also has a nice little plan here as well. This is all, you know, strategy for mates uh, right now, but what he... And he tried to follow it through, but uh, it didn't work out for him. Now that he moved his knight, his knight is no longer protecting these two pawns. Um, and I've got a nice little pin on this pawn right here. And this is protected by my rook, which he moved earlier. So I went ahead and took with my knight there. Um, there's nothing he can really do about it. I mean, he could exchange a queen for a knight and a rook, but in this position, I don't really think that was ideal for him. This is uh, his proposed, it's not a mating attack per se, but it's a way to win my queen. And it was pretty clever, and I've actually done this quite a few times myself. Um, but now that he moved here, my knight, first and foremost, is under attack, so I have to move him. So I just move him back to his original square. I have two attackers on this, to his one defender. And I don't remember exactly, but I think that um, he said the attack is stronger than me taking this pawn, which I agree right now. Um, so let's just go a couple moves more. He takes with the knight here, and this is the strategy he had, and it's pretty nice. Um, if I took with the queen here, he has a discovered check with his queen, moving his bishop right here and winning my queen. <laughs> so that would be bad to take right here. What he also has is a nice little check right here, um, eventually, if he defends it, um, with this bishop. For example, he could now move his bishop right here. Say I did like a nothing move, like an a6 or something like that. He could move his bishop right here. I can't recapture because this knight is defending it. And then he has a nice check here, forking my queen and my rook, winning my rook. So I decide to get rid of this rook right away. Obviously, he recaptures, and it's at this point that I start to realize that I have this rook on an open file, and he only has one defender of the back rank, which is undefended right now. I have a couple of flight squares, well, I don't right now, but I have an opening to get a flight square if I needed to, and right now, he hasn't moved any of his king size pieces. So, like I said, I had two attackers on this pawn, and I decided to carry on with that. <laughs> his knight, um, or his uh, rook comes over, threatening to take my bishop. I do a discovered attack on this um, on the queen right here, which I liked a lot. This is a nice, uh, you know, intermediate move, waiting move, um, and it does a couple things. First of all, you know, it forces the queen to move somewhere. Um, and second of all, this bishop is no longer on the same diagonal that I want my rook to go. So he, he can recapture this, you know, with the bishop eventually, but for the next move or two, this file belongs to my rook. Um, so obviously he moves his queen out of the way. I decide to save this bishop because, for a couple reasons, because it... Um, defends this square now, because I, I figured he would, you know, take back with the, with the bishop eventually right here in case I wanted to come up and get this file. But he obviously, you know, he wasn't thinking about this right now. One of these moves here, I would hope that if I was him, I would have, you know, got this flight square going for your, your king, because you have to notice that your, your back rank is very undefended right now. So he gets his knight out of there, which, you know, is a fair enough move. Um, he got his knight out of there because, you know, this is no longer on since the queen is no longer with the discover check right now. I could just take that knight if I wanted to. So he got his knight out of there, which is a fair enough move. I check the rook right here, and he has a double attack on this right now, and so, you know, it's a fair enough move, he goes ahead and takes it, and thinking that, you know, I'd have to move my, my queen or something, but that was game. This is mate right here, um, he brings his rook back, I can take with this rook, check, he has to take with the queen, I can recapture with my queen, and that's checkmate. So, I uh, hope that this was instructional for anybody that watched, and uh, have a good rest of your day.